My business is right, though. I own half my masters. I can get my other half anytime I want. I can buy it anytime I want. I can get it tonight if I want. But I don't want, I, I, I like you in business with me. When you when I make money, you make money. You're going to want to make money with me. And you know, if I say I want I got this, I'm ready to do this, that, and that, and that. He's a giver. Ready to support and Taking abundance. That's a blessing. It's called great partners. Kyle has made teams and partnerships that want to win together. They pull the resources together. And instead of just saying, I want to get 100% of this small bag, I want to get 50% of this humongous bag because I got a partnerships and people I want to feed. But the 50% of the bigger bag is a whole lot greater than the 100% of the smaller bag. Make sense? What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here. Healing to you from Dallas, Texas, and we have another reaction video here. This time reacting to DJ Khaled. Another one. I mean, who doesn't love DJ Khaled, man? We the best music. I love this guy. Everything about him, his career, his music, I identify with clearly, you know, he's a... Uh, Immigrant parents, uh, I think, uh, uh, raised in New Orleans, Palestinian, uh, Palestinian background. Me, raised in Chicago, Filipino background. So I really relate with this guy. We love hip hop. We love everything about it. We love the culture. And uh, I really identify with this guy. And I'm interested in this conversation because I believe my team told me he's breaking down his career, some of the power moves he's taken throughout his career, and how he's gotten him to where he's at today, and how he's becoming a big, bigger blessing to a lot of people in the music industry. So let's take a look here at DJ Khaled. Let's go. So this, the reason why I'm bringing out all these deals is because I want to let the let new know. artists know, yeah. even if you had a bad deal, mm. be grateful. Because I was grateful for every single deal mm. I ever got because it's a learning experience right. to get a better one. That's right. Mm. So interesting, uh, we were just going with my team this morning about some of the oldest videos I did from maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I looked at some of these videos. I'm like, I can't believe that some of the things I used to attempt to do on YouTube, my first conversation with seminars and my first waves of uh, doing pitches in a boardroom and pitching my idea and selling insurance and selling entrepreneurship to other people, selling the concept of going in business for yourself. I felt kind of awkward doing it. I'm looking at myself like, my gosh, I can't believe people even listen to me. But every opportunity for you to grow is a stepping stone. There's an image that you think that's in your head that's actually different when it's actually expressed. And only when it's expressed and you watch yourself, you critique yourself and you improve yourself, only then can you grow. But you got to get it out there. And so I appreciate DJ Khaled saying that because uh, even though some of the jobs that you had, even some of the business that you may have started, these were all stepping stones. If you look upon them as stepping stones, be grateful of every experience because it helped you get to where you want to go. Now, with that being said, there's going to be some good decisions you made, and there's going to be some very bad decisions you made, but nonetheless, you will learn from all these by going from deal to deal. And after you get a better one, you learn more and you learn it's more. Me, I'm a grateful guy. I don't have, nobody ever did me wrong. Nobody. Mm. Not one person. Mm. Because I am grateful for the opportunity. Mm. When you get an opportunity... I want to challenge that. I think somebody did do him wrong or he has been stabbed in the back many times or people stole money from him or people stole music from him. I can't imagine a guy like him has never got stabbed in the back. I think it's his attitude that says, I never got stabbed in the back. People may have crossed him, but he never took it like that. And so, uh, salute to DJ Khaled. It's, you got to be grateful now. So no one did you wrong in your eyes. No, nobody right. did me wrong. In your eyes. Because guys at the end of the days, we're all men... And at the end of the day, is that's why I said we got, can come to the table. Right. Sometimes you grow. You know what I'm saying? Early in my career, I might have made my first deal might have been twenty thousand mm. dollars. But look at me now. I'm a CEO. I'm DJ Khaled. I have eleven albums out. I'm working on my twelfth album. Mm. I have a, a, a brand called We the Best. I own my masters. Mm. Uh, this I I mean, look at he me. owns his like, masters. I, obviously, I'm grateful. Mm. So anybody I ever work with, I appreciate them. Mm. I love them, uh, and to this day, I don't. I don't believe in burning no bridges. Right. Only God can walk on water. Right. Don't burn a bridge. I'm so glad you said that, man, because if you know, sometimes the people look at you and your rise to success and they think now they, they see your chapter 10, they see your chapter 25, and they're comparing with their chapter one. They look at you and like, oh my gosh, this guy, this girl this is awesome. And then you make a bad decision. And then you say something from stage. And then you say something flippantly in a boardroom or in a meeting. And next thing you know, they're, they're burning you. So... I get what he says here. He didn't burn any bridge, but there might be people out there that will burn the bridge with you. What do you do? You forgive. You extend grace. They don't walk on water. You don't walk on water. Who are you to judge? 
who are you to point the figures? You're going to be making the mistakes too as well. So I've had many instances where people have crossed me, have stabbed me in the back. But at the end of the day, listen, I have the power to forgive. I have the power to extend grace because grace has been extended to me. So therefore, I don't harbor any ill will to anybody. And I pray that nobody holds any ill will to me. Now, if they do, then, hey, that's on them. But I don't hold any ill will to anybody who's crossed me. And by the way, after 23 years of being an entrepreneur and being uh, married and divorced, and now my second marriage and my last marriage, there's been some people that have crossed me. But at the end of the day, I want to forgive. I want to let go. Let God deal with them. And uh, I just need to make sure that whatever blessing has been sent my way, I do the most with them. Only God can walk on water. The only time it is, I feel like it gets so serious if somebody violates you, hurts right. you, you know, does something to that point to your family. That's violation. Right, right. That's these, these are opportunities. Right. I'm feeding but, my but family. Was transition. I, do, I, I, I don't call it the music business. I call it the music blessing. Right. Music changed my life. Yeah. It makes me take care of my kids. Yep. I love music. Yes. yes, you have to know how to do your business. Yes. yes. You have to know what was the transition from right. Koch to cash money? Was it, was it, I'm not saying on, on, on Koch's behalf, was it like... Well, Koch, I never wanted to leave Koch. Oh, wow. And, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. It wasn't about the money. Wow. I loved Alan Grumblack. I never wanted to leave Koch. Yeah, sure. But my now, granted, these are people I don't know about, but uh, nonetheless, it's all about dealings, people of apparent credibility and establishment in, in business and in the industry, you know, so filling in the blanks here. You know, I just got done dropping all I do is win. I'm one, I'm, sell, I'm, I'm, I'm selling records I love at a song, time all where I do is win. That's my, that's my jam right it. there. I, I dropped I'm So Hood, Brown Paper Bag, All I Do Is Win, We Taking Over. Mm. Um, we taking huge over. records. Huge f***ing records, right? And my contract is up. And I'm like, yo, Alan, I'll stay. What? Yeah, yeah, because he stayed because uh, you won with him. Why not win some more? But... I need a bigger bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I prove myself. And what I'm saying is, you know, if you're going to use leverage, you have to have, you have to bring something to the table. What I brought to the table is that I make hit records, the people love me, and we the best brand is getting bigger and bigger. And I was just like, and he wanted to do it. I love them. They're my partners. I love when my management can make money. I love when Epic and Sony can make money because we're making money together. together. My See, uh, that man's awesome. So, listen, DJ Khaled, he, he, let's, let me unpack that real quick. So, number one, he wanted a bigger back. He knew his worth. Why? Because he brought something to the table. See, oftentimes people put the cart in front of the horse, meaning that they expect a bigger bag, but they don't do a lot of work. Well, you know, I come from this, I come from that. I have a great market. Well, you we haven't done anything yet. Put it on the table. See what you can do. See what type of sales you can create. What type of production you can accomplish. What type of relationships you can accept. You don't come and ask him right away just because I got a piece of paper or I got a wealthy last name or no, uh, whatever last name just because you are who you are but you haven't created any tangible results yet for somebody to say, okay, you're worth this. Then, hey, you're still in learning mode. Okay, so the second part is he wanted his partners to make money. So he realized that from an abundance mentality that there's a lot of pie on the table. There's a lot of money on the table. And everybody can get their slice. Everybody can get their piece. And he's glad to have partners. You know, one thing uh, Rabbi Lappin, had, uh, we had an interview with Rabbi Lappin about biblical principles about money and wealth building, et cetera. He said, listen, with inside the, even the Jewish community, that when one Jewish man makes money, everybody makes money. Why? Because he creates jobs for other people in his neighborhood, in his family, in their faith. That money circulates with inside that community. So everybody is making money. So the question for you is, whatever it is that you're doing, are other people making money too as well? Or is it that just, just you? It's only me, myself, and I. It's only good for me. You're hoarding everything. You're keeping everything. You're not looking to lift people up. You're not looking to bless other people up. You're not looking to create a team. You know, the fancy saying is that if you want to go fast, you do it yourself. But if you want to go far, you build a team. And so Kyle has made teams and partnerships that want to win together. They pull the resources together. And instead of just saying, I want to get 100% of this small bag, I want to get 50% of this humongous bag because I got to partnerships and people I want to feed, but the 50% of the bigger bag is a whole lot greater than the 100% of the smaller bag. Make sense? Making money together. Yeah, my, business together. Is, right. my business is right, though. Right. I own half my masters. Right. I can get my other half anytime I want. Mm -hmm. 
I could buy any time I want. I can get it tonight if I want. But I don't want. I, I, I like you in business with me. When you when I make money, you make money. You're gonna want to make right. money with me. You're and push it. You're gonna, if I say I want, I got this, I'm ready to do this, that, and that, and that. They're ready to support and Thinking fund in abundance. You. That's a blessing. It's called great partners. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, and I can do it the other way. And by the way, the vice versa, if you find yourself a lawyer, an accountant, or a partner, or a, a, somebody that has an alliance with you, and it's only one-sided, like, for example, um, it's not too off-putting where if you end up doing business with a lot of people, it's not too off-putting for you to expect them to do business with you too as well. It's only natural. Why wouldn't they do business with you? And if they don't do business with you and you're doing business with them, well, that's a one-sided partnership. So find other ways to either create an apples-to-apples -apples exchange and relationship where people are happy or an apples-to-orange exchange. It's usually those are best to have a prosperous and fulfilling relationship so people can grow together and build together. That's how you create not only relationships, but deep friendships over your lifetime. Way I can own 100% of my masses tonight. I own my masses. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, is I love having great partners. Me, I'm speaking for Cowit. Everybody's right. different. Mm -hmm. Every I was independent for years. By the way, this is I, I didn't know that about him. So he was very independent. Now he's with these bigger labels. Some, sometimes people just say, I'm just independent, independent. That's cool. But pretty soon you're going to need a platform. Pretty soon you're going to need a strategic relationship and strategic partnership. You know, it reminds me of my career when I uh, came here to PHP agency. I, uh, I could have started my own financial marketing organization. I was in the industry for 12 to 14 years. I had my contacts. I had my production. I had my experience. I had my track record. You know, companies were willing to throw insurance contracts might and do deals with me. But I said, you know what, Patrick, but David, you bring something to the table that I cannot and I don't want to do. And that's having to be a C-suite executive. I have a specialty that I know I can recruit, train, develop, and lead. But I'm not so sure if I want to deal with home office executives. I'm not so sure if I want to deal with CFOs and CMOs and CROs and CTOs and CIOs and accounting department, do business department, compliance department. I don't, I'm not so sure if I'm cut out for that. I can, however, deal with recruiting and building sales agents. I can deal with clients. I can deal with doing corporate presentation. I can deal with the boardroom. I'm not so sure about the administration uh, side of things. And it's a beautiful partnership. Even though I don't have the top contracts inside the entire industry, I did at one point for 12 to 14 years. But now I give up a little piece of that and I create a strategic partnership. And that piece pays for Patrick and PHP agency to fulfill these things that I don't want to do. And guess what? I've made more money and a lot more happier than had I been just completely 100% independent. And so I'm glad that there's a parallel principle and value and a story here with DJ Khaled in the music business. Pretty interesting that I'm seeing this right now. And that's when my fans experience the keys. Mm. So let me tell you. That's when Snapchat came? Yeah, so listen. Oh, we got to get to that so too. I leave, yeah. I, leave, um, I end up, um, my deal's up, you know, leaving Cash Money Universal. Mm. I'm broke. Wow. Oh, when I say broke, meaning as in like, I had nothing to show for. By the way, that's how I felt after 12, 14 years in business, running my own self-employed, independent contractor type of operation. It was myself and three other people and three other different paid employees. At the end of the day, because I didn't scale, because I, I didn't partner, I didn't have a strategic alliance as I do right now, I looked back and said, you know what, very cool. And it reminded me of my time in the military. When I spent eight years in the military, I spent eight years in the Marine Corps, I look back, leaving the military, I look back and say, man, what do, I, what do I have that I can show for for my eight years in the Marine Corps? Only thing, one good thing I had was my son, okay, who was one, two years old at the time. I looked at the same thing to him 12, 14 years of my career. I went through all this production, went through all these relationships. I thought in my head I should be that much more further ahead. And quite frankly, I was just self-employed and broke at another level. I wasn't creating any exponential momentum. It wasn't going like this. It was kind of like more linear versus exponential. I wanted exponential. I wanted leverage. I wanted to be able to leverage a platform and leverage a relationship that take me like this. It wasn't coming around 12 to, 12 to 14 years. So, wow, what an interesting parallel here I'm seeing with DJ Khaled. And by the way, I'm still trying to get this type of bag that DJ Khaled's got, but uh, it's interesting that even in a different industry, values and principles still operate regardless of industry. So what I'm trying to tell you when I say broke, meaning as in, when I went independent, I said, yo, I need to own a house. Right. What if I stop today? I own nothing. <laughs> so I made sure I bought my last dollar, I bought my house. 
made sure mom and dad was straight. Mm. Now I'm on the road every day doing parties, hosting, but I was just making enough money to Make pay sure the bills. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that's none of us. And then I went independent. So DJ Khaled talk about basically living paycheck to paycheck. I spent all my money on the I Changed the Lot album. Oh, wow, mm. okay. Over like $2 million. You know, whatever show I would make, I put it into the album. This I put it in the album. But I say broke meaning as in, if I made $100, it went into the album. Okay, so he's 100% reinvesting back into himself. 100% reinvesting back to himself. He's not increasing his lifestyle. By the way, parallel here, who did this? We did a previous interview here. Check out this interview here with Rick Ross. He had the same thing for 10 years. He made zero money because he put everything back into building relationships, putting back into his music, putting everything back into building his career for 10 years. Wasn't taking any cash. Would you do that? DJ Khaled is doing the same thing here, reinvesting everything back into his business because his vision is greater than any status symbol of a car or house can show or establish because he believed in his vision. If I made $100,000, yeah. you know, it kept putting yeah. it in there. Mm. I change a lot, comes out. It doesn't do too good, but Ooh. I'm independent. To this day, I still get paid off the album. Still mm. do. To this day, I still get royalties and pay. I own 100% of that to this mm. day. So I know the wow. feeling of independent. Right. To this day, I still get paid off that album. Wow. But what I'm trying to It's beautiful. So he owns it. He owns the music. Because sometimes people do deals and a studio. Uh, listen, I got a book coming out here uh, pretty soon. I'm going independent with my book. I'm not going with the publisher because I attempt to go in with the publisher. The publisher tried to put a collar around my neck and try to put a short leash on me. And anyway, I had to buy my rights back. So therefore, they wouldn't publish an unfinished book. Anyway, it's another story. But there's a benefit of being independent. He understood the game. He understood the fact that he eventually needed partners. Having the residual income is great, but he did this much all by himself as an independent. But now he's looking to take it to the next level. Now he's looking for strategic partnerships. And, and if he needs to give up some of that ownership to a strategic partner, well, so be it because he just increases the volume of business and the reach of the business he can establish. I'll tell you is, but there's a thing called, when I went independent, my label deal was up, my publishing deal was up, I was free agent across the board. Mm. They try to count me out. So even in like uh, Nori, Nori, they try to count me out. What? <laughs> they try to finish me. Huh. I end up being free agent, and guess what happens? Guess what God does? He separates everything out. I let people in my world. My first time I ever let my fans mm. in my in in my personal life through my Snapchat. Woo! Transparency, you know, being authentic you know and genuine. Me, you know me, I've always been like that. From that day on now, the reason why I'm gonna bring up the free agent word, word is I'm free agent. The whole world is screaming DJ Cowan. The whole entire world, like the world. I got every record company in the world calling, trying to fly jets in. Yo, we're sending you, yo, well, let's do a new deal, let's do a deal, what's whatever. L.A. Reid called me. L.A. Reid's the first guy that gave me my first label deal. Mm. And he gave me a huge executive position. So I never forgot that. Mm. I respect that. Ten years later, we reconnect. He calls me at Christmas time and says, hey. Mm. I heard you're free agent. <laughs> wow. Bob, this is an example of being diligent in your work. And I'm reminded of King Solomon. Yes, from the Bible, who wrote the book, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, and a proverb that sticks out to my mind is this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, reads like this. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. And Proverbs chapter 10, verse four, reads like this. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. So DJ Khaled is now starting to experience wealth. He's making an impact. And better yet, he's also building himself a reputation in the music industry. Yes, fans, of course, they love his music. But inside the music industry, he's building himself a reputation where even the first guy he signed a record deal with wants to revisit him 10 years later, recognizes that he's a free agent. He said, listen, are you open to a new contract? Are you done with your deals? Are you done with your contracts? Yes. And I'm thinking he's about to go into the story about re sign with us and here's what we can bring to the table, which is a whole lot bigger than what it was 10 years ago. Let's check this out. I said, LA, you know what? God talking to me, you know what I'm saying? And 
You was there for me. You believed in me early. Early. You gave me my first big check early. Wow. Let's do business. Wow. And the more the story is, I was free agent when they try to count me out. There it is. Meaning as in, the ball's in my court. Yes. Right. So any deal I did was going to be done right, incredibly, and a blessing. When times go hard, go hard. Right. When times is great, go harder. Right. So, I don't know, I ain't stopping. We bless, God Let's is make great. make some noise through the back, bro. Yeah. I'm reminded of another proverb, it goes like this. 15 verse six, the house of the righteous contains great treasure, but the income of the wicked brings ruin. Because of DJ Khaled's attitude, grateful for everybody he's done business with every step of the way and maximized that relationship that no matter what happened with his relation, I'm, I'm getting to know the business side of things. Everybody knows his music side, but understanding his business side of things, the fact that he's grateful, the fact that he appreciates the relationships that he is in business with, and he maximizes, he's looking to give and not only just give, hey man, I just do it 100%. He's looking to give 150% into that relationship. Because he's invested not only in the contract, but he's also invested in his reputation in those relationships. Years down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, not only those bridges not been broken and strengthened, but people want you to come back to them. And at the same time, they've grown. They've elevated if it's the right partner, if it's the right strategic partner, and they've done diligence in their work too as well. So a pending recession is around the corner. Inflation rates are high, interest rates are high, Supply chain, inventory of housing starting to climb. People's homes are being uh, relisted and price reduced. A lot of different, you know, mortgage people and real estate people are looking at a lot of layoffs in their industry. The same volume for mortgages, anything related to that industry. And the same thing too with cars. They're not being sold as high price as they were this time last year as they were. So, so things are looking a little dark. Right now, but that potential darkness may come over. But listen, in that midst of that darkness, with your attitude, your gratitude, your gratefulness, your inspiration, your diligence, your discipline, you be a light in that darkness. And in moments like this is when people remember you. In moments like this, people say, okay, this person staying squared away. This person is still maximizing the relationship. I can count on this person. And you give them a sense of trust, safety, and security. So with that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback, you agree with some of the things he said, I said, or not, please put in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please check out the other reaction videos here we've done with other hip hop entertainers and celebrities and athletes in a channel, making sure we're looking at it through the lens of wealth building, leadership, values, and principles. So therefore you can start thinking like a millionaire. You can strategize like a millionaire. So therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. All right. If you want part two of my reaction to DJ Khaled and his moves, I love this guy. Who doesn't love this guy? Please comment below part two for DJ Khaled reaction. Please put it in the comment section below. That being said, if you watch this video and you got value from it, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, consider this smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today.